So, Colonel Lavone, thank you for talking to the Vivaldi Connections. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, I would like to begin by actually asking you about your own career. As I understand it, this is your second uh, um, tour here in the United States. But you enlisted or joined the army when? I joined the Hungarian uh, army in 1988. I started at a military college and I graduated as an infantry officer, as a lieutenant in 1991. And uh, uh, after several years of uh, career, I uh, finished another educational course uh, and got my master's degree in international relations and uh, policy. After that, I uh, joined the Hungarian uh, Ministry of Defense as an international relations uh, expert and desk officer, came to the United States for the first uh, mission between 2003 and 6 assistant, assistant defense military and air, air attaché. 2006 to 2011, I served at the MOD again, and uh, I left that position to come here. Uh, the last, last position was the deputy director uh, of international cooperation. And uh, do you actually know how long this tour lasts here? Uh, usually we have the three or four years tour, it depends on the situation. But you don't know where you're going next? Uh, I do not see that. Well, do you uh, ever uh, feel that you miss being a field officer with, uh, with an infantry regiment <laughs> again? Uh, sometimes I, f I feel it, you know, I really like uh, to be with the troops. Uh, I served on the Balkans uh, in 2000 in Kosovo and after that in uh, Macedonia. Uh, uh, during the Tetovo crisis, it was a very interesting experience. Uh, sometimes I feel I, I, I miss it uh, to serve with the troops. Uh, it might happen that I will get back to a certain position again uh, to Afghanistan. I will be deployed to Afghanistan or another area where it is needed. Right. Now, the, the Afghanistan brings up a point. The Hungarian army, uh, the Hungarian military, was in both Afghanistan and in, the Ira in Iraq. In Iraq, it was a transport uh, operation? Yes, it was a transportation battery, and it was a, an important task and a kind of difficult task. Yes, the roadside bomb and the IED uh, activity, that was the area when it started to be, uh, become a real threat. Uh, we had to deal with it, but uh, we succeeded. Unfortunately, we lost uh, our uh, first soldier in during combat uh, operations uh, in Iraq. Since then, we lost several other uh, soldiers. Um, there's other nations uh, in, as well, yeah, in Afghanistan. And uh, in Iraq, we participated also in the training mission with officers and NCOs. Uh, right after uh, the Afghanistan operations become much more intense and more important, uh, we, uh, we deployed our forces there as well. Uh, PRT, uh, which also not only the military uh, part, uh, but also the civil uh, reconstruction. This uh, is the provincial uh, reconstruction team. Yes. Which involved both military, military and, and uh, uh, civilians. Civilians. Yes, and we have other training and monitoring teams in Afghanistan. Uh, these are important, not only because Hungarians we serve there as a NATO member, but also other NATO member nations participate, so we serve together. For example, in the PRT in Bagram province, there are Montenegrin, Croatian and Albanian forces serving within the Hungarian PRT. And uh, other so-called uh, OMLT, uh, which is responsible for the training of monitoring, the, monitor, monitor, monitoring team, uh, not, not, I'm sorry, not monitoring, but mentoring. Mentoring, mentoring, mentoring team, uh, which is responsible for the training uh, and the preparation for an Afghan candidate. And uh, in the, this OMRT, we serve together with the Ohio National Guard uh, uh, soldiers, and they fight uh, together. They help the Afghans together. So it's a, it's a very unique uh, opportunity to, to participate together with American forces. So this is actually a joint American-Hungarian yes. uh, operation? Yes, it is. And this Ohio National Guard and Hungarian Armed Forces uh, Cooperation, it is, next year it will, we will celebrate the 20th anniversary, 20 years uh, we started this cooperation. And uh, uh, in Afghanistan we are 
there with our troops fighting with each other, uh, shoulder to shoulder, and uh, and it's it's a very why Ohio for any any particular reason? I mean, in other words, you you were linked to the Ohio National Guard yes. 20 years ago. Yes. Yeah, like other European countries, right. were linked to certain. St State uh, National Guards and Hungary and the Ohio National Guard established this relationship in '92. Ohio helped us uh, to prepare for the, uh, joining the NATO, and uh, after and we had a lot of uh, common exercises and trainings, and uh, we know we are together in Afghanistan. And it's in interesting because no Serbia is involved as well. It's a trilateral cooperation now. So Ohio National Guard, Hungary and the Serbia, we are working together. We are helping now uh, the Serbian uh, uh, preparation for... For intervention to NATO? Uh, that's a question. Uh, yeah, one day it will, uh, it will come up for sure. Uh, but uh, right now we have them to prepare for international presence and participation international... Uh, so this is a professional army, not um, a uh, conscripted army? Yeah, not anymore. We have uh, approximately 10 years of experience of professional army, but we had a long way to go to get to this point. So like 20 years ago, the Hungarian military consists of more than 120,000 uh, uh, soldiers. Uh, uh, conscripts. Uh, conscripts. Conscripts and also the officers and, and NCOs. Right now we have 25,000 all together in the Hungarian military, and we have to be more efficient than ever because for 60 years we had no real uh, wartime experience. You know, during the Cold War, our troops were not engaged, not uh, involved, and they were, had been always just preparing the war. But finally, we are in peacekeeping and uh, uh, different uh, other missions as well. No, we really had to face the real war uh, situation. And no, our troops are fighting alongside with the U.S. and other NATO member countries. Right. It's a big difference. Right. Absolutely. What does uh, being in NATO mean to the Hungarian army? The NATO membership and also the European Union membership is the two most important uh, uh, cornerstones of the Hungarian state and the Hungarian military as well. Uh, part of being part of Europe and the part of this alliance. Uh, it, it helps us, uh, to, it, it provides the stability for the region, it helps us both politically and economically, so it is our most important uh, intention participation. You, uh, in that time, you had to make a, a, an important transition. One of them was to being part of the alliance, but the other was to re-equipping yourself, wasn't it? Re-equipping, it is still an ongoing process, you know, it has, two. one is the intention, the intention we have, the other one is the budget, right. and the financial part of it, that's, we have to face difficulties as other uh, countries left the Warsaw Pact are facing difficulties to get the Western technology. Every day, all of our, all of these countries are striving uh, to modernize uh, their military equipment, as we do as well. It takes time and also it takes a lot of money. For some areas, we get uh, um, U.S. technology, for, which have our international uh, peacekeeping participations and also the Afghanistan participation, U.S. Uh, vehicles and weapon system, like uh, arms and, uh, and uh, communication uh, uh, equipment. It, it's very essential for mm -hmm. our presence. And uh, U.S as a kind of appreciation also as a support for the Hungarian participation in Afghanistan provided not only equipment but also U.S. Congress approved money. The, in the past three years, Hungary uh, uh, got more than 30 million U.S. dollars in terms of uh, equipment and training. Like this year, the Congress approved more than uh, 13, 13, uh, 13 million, million dollars. And we, all of that money is being spent for Hungarian uh, military capability uh, right uh, in order to to yeah. to uh, develop uh, a, a modern uh, yeah a, modern a, a, a modern armed forces force. is is uh, is the fact that you happen to be in nato how do you reconcile that with uh, the national uh, 
sentiment of, of an army. I'm not just talking about yours, but I'm talking about, you know, you're in NATO, which is, of course, a unified force, and at the same time, uh, part of being an army, it seems to me, is involved with, uh, you know, national interests and the national uh, and a sense of nation. It is a question I, I, I really like to, to answer, because as a member of the NATO, yeah, really, our troops has to be able to cooperate, and they have to operate together, so no question that which other nation's uh, unit is working with which other NATO member nation, we have to be prepared for that, and, and we are doing well in this regard. At the same time, we also can keep and we could bring back our military traditions before uh, the more so practice area, but uh, before the Second uh, World War, uh, those hundred years of, I would long say, history, a very long yeah, history of Hungary and uh, military expertise. And uh, like all military officers uh, participated in other revolution and freedom wars in Europe and also in the United States. Uh, you know, from in the 1700s, we had Hungarian officers who have uh, the, uh, the... Fighting on the side the, of uh, George Washington. George yes, Washington. exactly. And, uh, and uh, later in the 1800s, again, we had Hungarian... In the uh, Civil War. Yeah, the Civil War, Hungarian fighting generals, officers, and also enlisted as well. And Hungarians are uh, buried in the Arlington Cemetery. Generals, Hungarian generals, and uh, officers, and uh, enlisted personnel also from the different U.S. wars uh, fighting for freedom. But uh, the, uh, the, in the question of... Uh, nations coming together to fight in NATO. Uh, how do you deal with different cultural, I don't mean military cultural, but just cultural uh, um, characteristics? I mean, you, you have to kind of figure out that if you're with Italians, it's going to be one way, and if you're with French, it's going to be somewhere else. I mean, isn't it, does that ever constitute a problem? During my career, I never felt it as a problem. It was more like an added color, an added value that each nation has something to share, something more. And those uh, differences actually help uh, the NATO be more effective because those unique uh, capabilities or unique approach, uh, that added value, it creates a more, not, not a less. So I like these cultural uh, differences, but at the same time, you always understand each other, uh, like you here in the diplomatic committee and also our forces on the ground, our troops on the, on the ground. Uh, they like to serve together, and that experience is important because that's how we get to know each other and how we are able to operate uh, more efficiently. Now, how many times have you actually been in the United States? Not just the two times oh. when you were in the embassy. Oh, uh, I, many times actually, because I've, you, been, I've, been, I've been practicing karate for more than 30 years, and my karate master lives uh, in uh, Seattle, who he had also a presidential award from uh, George Bush. Uh, he was mem uh, the president of the. Uh, You've been United practicing State. karate? Yes, more than I 30, 30 years. And I, I can't. And what sort of color belt are you? I am a black belt. I see. <laughs> I see. But, and you presumably you go to Ohio, don't you? I visited Ohio, yeah, of course. Uh, like um, two months ago, I visited Ohio uh, with the, in the delegation uh, of the. Hungarian Chief of Defense, because the Ohio National Guard, the Hungarian Armed Forces, and the Serbian uh, Armed Forces, Defense Forces, we had uh, uh, the three, uh, uh, the two chods and the Adjutant General of Ohio, we had a meeting, and also a staff meeting, and uh, we agreed about the future cooperation, uh, the one step forward always. I see. So this, uh, this cooperation with Ohio will continue? Oh, sure. And next year we will celebrate the 20th anniversary. I hope also in Hungary and in the United States we will have events. But I also understand that uh, uh, you've done some, uh, pro you've had some private uh, achievements, uh, including saving people from drowning. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's a story I like. Uh, it happened in 2004 in Norfolk uh, during my first term as an assistant defense attaché. I visited the national senior representative in Norfolk, a colonel friend uh, of mine and uh, he invited uh, me to the Virginia Beach where I just swam and uh, it finally happened that uh, grandmother and, uh, and the granddaughter had to be saved from the water. Actually no one was on the, on the beach, uh, just few people and, I, and then I realized that they were in trouble 
and it's an interesting, interesting experience. I was lucky to be there. It's it's very nice. Story. How old was the daughter? The granddaughter? Well, she was like five years old. I see. And uh, she was with an older other girl. She just couldn't swim to the the course because the big waves just pulled her back. Uh, so she was in trouble. So I see. But are you are you a, a swimmer also, apart from being karate? I do swim. I I I, I was an active athlete and. Uh, member of the Hungarian uh, Armed Forces uh, national uh, team for military, uh, modern mi uh, military pentathlon, it's uh, different from the Olympic pentathlon, military pentathlon, and other sports as well. I was very active at the... You also, do you also play soccer? I do, but I am not as good as some American officers, like in the Pentagon, the uh, director of the Army Foreign Liaison, he is a great soccer player. I understand that uh, some of the foreign uh, um, military and defense attaches here actually have a sort of weekend uh, soccer uh, yeah they do but uh, since soccer uh, seems to be seems to be a more dangerous sport for me than uh, karate I got more injuries during play, uh, playing see. soccer than uh, uh, competing see. karate I decided during this term I, I will not play not to risk any knee injuries or something like this but I do practice karate so it's interesting okay what uh, what are your ex what what do you hear about and what are your expectations from the coming uh, NATO summit in Chicago? Oh, it's it's a very important summit. Uh, my country is preparing very well. My uh, prime minister, uh, the prime minister of Hungary, of the there, minister yes. of foreign affairs, and also the defense. minister of defense. Uh, uh, Will you be there? The defense attaches are not going because this delegation, everything is handled through Brussels. The, Ah, see, and then yes. the de very small delegation will be there. Right. We will. But nevertheless, it is an important. I'm sorry. I oh know. yeah, it's important, and we are preparing. We are sending home reports. We inter kind of ask the Americans to bring us other, uh, from their point of view. We also shared with them our point of view to get prepared for the summit, and we expect some uh, some uh, added information and uh, also. Some deliverables. Some, some deliverables. Some deliverables. Yes, uh, thank you for that. Some deliverables uh, concerning uh, Afghanistan, concerning smart defense, like. Uh, now tell me about smart defense. Smart defense. Uh, the idea is very important that it came up, and finally, it is not an idea anymore. It is uh, something on the ground already. That uh, nations uh, in this economical. It, the economic point of view is important, and also the strategic vision of the NATO point of view is important. Uh, economic point of view is that uh, many of the countries uh, had to reduce their defense budget, like the US and many European member, NATO member countries had to reduce their budget. So we have to find out how to be more effective. And smart defense is uh, not only uh, the way being more effective, but also how to cooperate. Uh, and, uh, uh, increase the cooperation uh, uh, among uh, the countries. And uh, Hungary is uh, kind of uh, in, a, in a good position because as uh, some NATO officials and also high-ranking uh, US officials, uh, politicians like uh, to uh, call the Hungarian uh, strategic airlift, uh, the strategic airlift capability at Papa base in Hungary as a smart defense before smart defense, uh, as 12 nations, not only NATO members, but also EU members, participated and created something, uh, a niche capability with this uh, strategic airlift. And uh, it, is, uh, it has ex exceeded uh, 7,000 flying hours, mainly ISAF Afghanistan operations, but also to Haiti, kind of disaster relief operations. This airlift uh, capability could uh, provide important which means basically that uh, there are there are uh, cost there is cost sharing cost sharing in in uh, in running a, a particular operation uh, exactly but also in the purchase of the planes yes it was also these nations I, yeah. I could say added the money together right. to buy three C seven things they right. are based it's a heavy airlift wing it is uh, based in Hungary in right. Papa and uh, for us it is important that such an uh, such a, uh, so all the nations who actually put were shareholders, if you like, yes. participate in it, and, but and it also works for NATO as a whole. Yes, exactly. And also it's a kind of uh, NATO and EU uh, 
uh, cooperation because yeah. not only NATO missions. Right, uh, right, right, right. I see. And that is uh, that comes into the uh, this the NATO program now, or was it there? Before? Yeah, yeah, it? yeah, yeah. It, it, it is important. It's sort of a pilot. It's kind of an example of how these things work. Yes, exactly. So they like it as an example. I hope that we can uh, create more and more programs similar to this one. And the center of excellences are also kind of similar to this one. That uh, for uh, questions and, uh, and areas, with questions being uh, has to be answered in certain areas, uh, we created these uh, kind of uh, centers, this center of excellences. In Hungary, the center of excellence for military medicine is uh, being, uh, being established and uh, there are different nations participating in this one. And we also held in Santander, in Hungary, and other, we cooperate with the Spanish Center of Excellence for counter IED uh, operations. And in Hungary, we have already courses for other nations available how to protect the troops, how to be prepared for counter the uh, IED, IED being threats. Being the, bomb, uh, the, road, explosive, the roadside, the roadside uh, bombs, explosive bombs, which, uh, which, uh, which have cause become it. one of the great threats. Yes, so. I serving think, in Afghanistan. Yeah, and Afghanistan around the world, it will be the greatest threat against uh, mm -hmm. against uh, troops and also civilians. And the other aspect of uh, Chicago, of course, is going to be uh, the to to spell out the the exit strategy and who stays, who goes, uh, etc. Uh, is the Hungarian uh, presence in Afghanistan is staying or going or what is the plan? Uh, do you know? Yes, we, we, we share the view of uh, together in, together out, mm -hmm. and uh, we will uh, stay in Afghanistan and we will have uh, the training and other uh, reconstruction needs based on uh, the Afghan, Afghan government and the, the NATO. Uh, uh, All right, well, f finally, here is a, is, is a, a postcard question, which is, you know, about what do you think of America? I mean, you live here. It's, you it's live great here. to work here. It is a very professional environment. I have very positive experience as a, as an officer, as a diplomat, and also as a private person. I mean, uh, I have many friends, not from the diplomatic corps and the U.S. military, but also from the sport and the karate and also in the, in the civilian life. Uh, I, I like to be here. I like to work together with Americans. It helped me a lot to leave here. It changed my view. I didn't know, I, I, I knew about America, I learned about America, I knew about the bilateral relations, everything, but it's different to live here, like it is different to live in Hungary. Uh, and just to view, look at Hungary from abroad. So you need an experience to live with it. Carol Bonnet, thank you very much for talking to Diplomatic Connections. Thank you very much for coming and visiting us.